What's up guys? Welcome back to the, another video. Today we react to Cuban Missile Crisis uh, by Extra History. Uh, part 1 that failed checkmate. Uh, you know, a very incident in the Cuban Missile yeah. Crisis, you know. Been uh, wanted to learn about more and more. So today we're going to get that chance. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, yeah, just uh, go down there and start what you're doing. Just hit it right now. Take three seconds. Take man. three seconds. Just all it takes. Like it helps us out a lot. It's, it really helps us a lot. Like the video. Also, uh, Turn hit on. that bell notification. And also, uh, if you got any video suggestions, uh, comment them below in the comment section. And we read all the comments, guys. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Two. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev is walking near his villa on the Black Sea. He looks across the water. On the far shore is Turkey, where, months before, President Kennedy had stationed nuclear missiles. Their warheads threaten Moscow. And he wonders, why then can't we do the same in Cuba? And the world slips one minute closer to midnight. This Cold War series is brought to you by Dominations. If you want to get your Khrushchev on, check out the link in the description. Remember when we did that Berlin airlift episode? Yep. Well, guys, folks at we Dominations wanted guys, to keep this Cold War party going. So, for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis. A time when, for 13 days, two great powers hurtled toward a global suicide pact. And it started with a bluff. Following the launch of Sputnik in 1957, Khrushchev had regularly bragged to foreign press about the Soviet missile system. His rockets could mm. hit a fly 8,000 miles away, he said, and <laughs> Moscow was cranking them out like sausages. In reality, though, his yes, intercontinental missiles were super inaccurate and took hours to launch. In the event Man. of a war, they'd probably be destroyed while... Oh, they say, I heard that they said a Russian missile. I don't know that for sure, but I heard, <laughs> I heard they missile stock back out. then. Or today, too, I think that it's not like a fan state there. I don't know. Maybe Meaning no that they weren't much of a deterrent against an American first strike. Like the These long range ball. missiles were little more than an empty threat. But Khrushchev did have reliable medium and intermediate range missiles. And if he could station those in Cuba, he could credibly threaten the United States in much the same way NATO had encircled and threatened the Soviet Union. <laughs> Get From back. that position of power, he could probably negotiate for Berlin or demand that Kennedy withdraw his missiles from Turkey. And as a bonus, the U.S. would never again dare to invade Cuba. Okay openly was not an option. Couldn't risk Kennedy doing something rash. No, Khrushchev would have to sneak them in not and only here. unveil them once How they were operational. Right it would be waters, a checkmate, bro. provided the secret held. On an To live a long and healthy life, you need to make the most of your health coverage. From Coverage to Care can show you how. On an undisclosed date in Havana, Fidel Castro sits in his office. The man mm. across from him, traveling undercover as an agricultural engineer, oh. is the head of Soviet rocket forces. And he's just offered to deploy nuclear missiles in Cuba. Castro is skeptical. If the Yankees discover a secret deployment, they'll think that the missiles are intended for a first strike. Right. Besides, Cuba you doesn't need... But you never know how they would have yeah, took that at first in response, bro. Me saying that, I would have said, like, nuclear weapons. Ornaments. And he wants to look like a Soviet <laughs> ally, not a puppet. Wouldn't a defense treaty be better? The Russian says, no, these weapons will counteract imperialist aggression, protecting both nations. Castro withdraws what? to confer, I, and I then says, delivers his answer. Cuba on. will yeah, help defend know, world revolution. Khrushchev will oh, have his Caribbean fortress. On August 25th in Sevastopol, a timber freighter pulls out of port, riding high on the water. Deep in its hold lie medium-range rockets, so long they that they have to be dinner, propped huh? up against a bulkhead. It's only one of 85 commercial ships ferrying troops and equipment to Cuba. The luckiest of these soldiers travel on cruise ships disguised as oh. tourists, but the majority are crammed into sweltering freighters. Like By early September, ship, the man. missiles begin arriving. And off, they're not alone. 42,000 Soviet troops come hey, ashore, in dressed in civilian clothes or Cuban army uniforms. They unload their cargoes by night. Helicopters, bombers, patrol Dude, boats, anti-aircraft guns, fighter jets, and medium-range ballistic missiles. The work begins. 
On October 16th at 11.50 a.m. in the Oval Office, President Kennedy and a handful of advisors sit at the briefing table, looking at blown up photos hey, from a brother, YouTube spy plane. Them, get ready for a all CIA stuff, bro, analyst like, lays it out. These are medium range missiles know, right? with a range of 1,174 miles. If one launches, it can hit Washington in 13 minutes. Kennedy is furious at Khrushchev's <laughs> betrayal. The midterms are coming up, and his political rivals have made the Soviet buildup in Cuba a campaign issue. They accuse him of letting the Soviets install missile platforms 90 miles from Florida. What Privately, Khrushchev had told Kennedy that the buildup was defensive, meant to avoid another American invasion, and that it wouldn't include missiles. With this assurance well, in hand, Kennedy had drawn a red line, pledging to take action if the Soviets stationed nuclear weapons in Cuba. He had made that pledge, thinking that he'd never have to go through with it. When will yeah, they be operational? Kennedy we know, asks. Prison. The analyst replies, once the warheads are attached, within hours. The defense secretary cuts in. If there's going to be an airstrike, it must happen before the missiles are operational. Uh, but there is evidence that the warheads... Bro, Kitty had a tough decision yeah. to go through, bro. Like, oh my, I don't want to be president yet. Then. He thinks that Kennedy still has time to plan. But the chairman of the Joint Chiefs disagrees. Most of the rocket infrastructure is already in place. He thinks that the president should... I wanna... Uh, yeah, we back. Okay. Nine from the National Security Council and five other key experts. It's the first meeting of what will be known as the Executive Again, Committee of the that National was, Security it, it was Council. What y'all would have did in that situation, bro? I don't know turns how on a tape I did, recorder, guys. Preserving the meeting. The Joint Chiefs state their unanimous position. An airstrike on the missile sites won't work. Khrushchev could won't. just send more missiles to replace the destroyed ones. And, and Soviet plus, bombers in Cuba already. could still hit Florida. They recommend 800 sorties destroying all Soviet power on the island, followed by an invasion. Kennedy's brother, Bobby, the attorney general, loves this plan because he hates like Castro. But the yeah. others point out that <laughs> airstrikes are never 100% effective. Right Some Russian missiles might who's survive the, the it guy? and launch the a counterstrike. And of course, if Soviet soldiers are manning the missiles, killing them in an airstrike could lead to war. Yeah. The Secretary of State so asks whether doing stuff, nothing bro. is an option. After all, those missiles don't really change the strategic balance. Is getting nuked from Cuba any different than getting nuked from Russia? Kennedy agrees it isn't, yeah, but he had Russia, pledged to right? take action, and if he reneges, Khrushchev might see it as weakness and start sending missiles to hotspots everywhere. So three plans are developed. First, diplomacy. Low chance of success, but low risk of war also. Hmm. Second, for, instituting a naval blockade to stop any more weapons from coming in, and calling for the missile's removal. Publicly warned that any offensive move against the U.S. would lead to a nuclear strike on the Soviet Union. Third, an airstrike with an optional invasion. XCOM goes back and forth, debating possible outcomes. But Kennedy keeps coming back to Khrushchev's thinking. Why would he do this? It would be like the U.S. putting missiles in Turkey. Oh. We did, points out the National oh. Security Advisor. <laughs> he didn't On October know that, 17th at Sometimes 12 p.m. in the Caribbean, 40 U.S. warships plunged toward a tiny island. He, he the Marines inside check their weapons. Soon they'll storm ashore and remove the island's dictator. It's just an exercise, one that was scheduled before the crisis. But in Washington, XCOM is still discussing whether they'll do this for real. Who's the blind guy, guys? On October 19th at 9.45 a.m. in the White House, the new intelligence reports are ominous. Fresh U-2 photos show two oh, medium-range sure. missiles are oh, now operational. Know, like, the Soviets are also building several launch sites room, for intermediate-range missiles that can hit almost all of the continental U.S. Those missiles aren't ready yet, but the decision window is closing. In the last several days, discussions in XCOM have increasingly turned away from the airstrike invasion option. Even Bobby has come around on that one. The blockade, <laughs> at least, leaves room to negotiate. 
But the Joint Chiefs still push for war. Kennedy of expresses course. his biggest concern. Bro, if he Kennedy attacks Cuba, Khrushchev right. will attack Berlin, and that'll oh, leave only one day, alternative. This is gonna be a, a nuclear this strike. Kennedy, bro. The Air Force Chief of Staff pushes back. If it came to it, they could wipe out the Soviets. Besides, a blockade will communicate weakness. He compares it to Nazi appeasement, which is a shot Ooh. at Kennedy's father, who once advocated negotiating Ooh. with Hitler. But Kennedy Him knows that belt, winning it? a nuclear war might still mean right. millions still of Americans. think about the deaths. Americans that's the living there. The general responds that the Air Force will be ready for an attack in two days, if ordered. These brass hats have one advantage, Kennedy says after the meeting. If we listen to them, none of us will be alive later to tell them they were wrong. All right, bro. He needs that, to bro. make a decision. Thank you. On October 20th at 9 a.m. in Cuba, the 79th Missile Regiment gathers around a political officer. He stands on a mound of dirt brought from the Soviet Union, a reminder that <laughs> these men are here to defend their homeland. He makes an announcement. Their eight medium-range missiles are combat ready. We may die martyrs, he says, but we won't abandon Cuba to the imperialists. His troops applaud. On October 22nd at 10 p.m. in the Kremlin, Khrushchev has received intelligence reports of unusual activity all over the U.S. Congressmen are apparently boarding Air Force jets back to Washington. Naval maneuvers are happening in the Caribbean, and civilians are evacuating Guantanamo Bay. Kennedy is scheduled to broadcast a television address at 2 a.m. Moscow time. The U.S. Embassy has told him to expect a communication an hour before. Khrushchev calls a meeting of the Presidium, oh the highest Ooh, committee like of people. the Communist Party. The missiles have been discovered, he says. An invasion no. of Cuba is imminent. He runs through his options, from announcing a mutual defense pact with Cuba over the radio, to transferring the missiles to Cuban control and letting them defend their own country. Wow, so the best he course, he Cuba. says, is to disallow Soviet troops from using the long-range missiles, but permit them to use their short-range tactical nuclear weapons what? in the event of an invasion. His defense minister, Malinovsky, cuts in. Putting that decision in the hand of commanders might accidentally precipitate a conflict. Right. He suggests waiting for Kennedy's message. Right. It yeah, thank you, bro. This is why you gotta have a group discussion. Not, an invasion, not everybody have but a good an ultimatum. Idea. There'll be no war tonight, but also no sleep. Because Nobody there are 14 tonight, Soviet bro. freighters inbound for Cuba right now. One carries nuclear warheads three bro, times this more is, powerful it, than this all the bombs so ever bad dropped in history. Right. And it is heading toward an American blockade. This well, at the, but the end of the day, soldiers protecting they protecting their country and, and America yeah, protecting their country. The same thing. And, but it just, just they misconstrued. Mis mis yeah, they both misconstrued what the other trying to do. Well, I don't know, Kenny and them. So I like they think. Yeah, they like his people wanted war stuff. So, like the yeah. what he Russians said about the Russians, they didn't want war. Like they were trying hard to push, but that's why you got people in the room. So, yeah. You know, guy, what you think of it? Uh, if you want to see part, oh. <laughs> come on now. Uh, yeah, all right, guys. Really back if it had froze uh so yeah but like i was saying if you want to see part two of it please mm -hmm. hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel also hit that subscribe button what else they should like do? button hit the like button down mm -hmm. below it don't take one second hit it, turn on post notifications know when we come out uh, uh we post every day so we come out videos every day mm -hmm. and uh put but down put but uh, put down, down below the comment section that what the videos you want us to react to mm -hmm. all right further ado, we out